What's up brand builders, Stephen Horahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn what brand recall is and how to unleash it with top examples. So you can learn how to plant a seed in the mind of your audience that will lead them back to your brand in the buying decision. Now brand recall is a term that is often recognized but little understood. Before your brand can be recalled it needs to be recognized and before it can be recognized your audience needs to have some awareness. So there is a stepping stone to achieving brand recall and it doesn't just happen overnight. While brand recognition is the ability of the consumer to recognize a brand from various sensory cues, brand recall is all the more powerful. Brand recall occurs when consumers remember a brand name when prompted with a category or with no prompting at all, making it a sought after spot in the audience's mind. And in this video, we're breaking down what brand recall is, how important it is to get to that buy, and some techniques that you can use to give your audience the best possible chance of recalling your brand. So let's start at the beginning. What is brand recall? Well, brand recall is the ability of consumers to remember a brand by name unaided by sensory cues, which is why it's also known as unaided recall or spontaneous recall. When a brand boasts strong recall, brand equity and market share usually follow due to the brand's ability to stay top of mind with the consumer. If we were to ask a consumer to name a burger-based fast food chain, what are the chances that their answer would include McDonald's or Burger King? And that's because these brand names have built their reputation over time. They've built their awareness over time, the recognition and the ability then for the market to easily recall that brand based on their category. So these brands stay top of mind within their category. So it goes without saying then that the higher the recall rate of a brand, the more chance that that brand will be present during the buying decision, and that is brand salience. So it all has a knock-on effect. The more brand awareness a brand has the more recognition it has, the more recall and salience it has, the higher the chance of that brand being selected. Now, when we talk about recall, you can experiment with this yourself. Which brands do you think of when given the following product car categories? A car manufacturer, a soft drink, an athletic clothing brand. Now, I'm betting there's a high chance that you would have thought of one or more of these brands, Toyota, Ford, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Nike, Adidas, all of these brands have achieved a high level of awareness and recognition within their categories, making it easy for them to be recalled. Now, as I mentioned, this level of strong brand recall, it doesn't happen overnight and it takes years of marketing efforts. So let's have a look at some of the advantages of strong recall. Now, it's not rocket science that living rent-free in your customer's mind is a good position for a brand to be in. Holding pride of place inevitably gives you a competitive advantage over other brands further down the pecking order. So let's drill down a little bit further as to how strong brand recall can help businesses and brands. Number one, boost sales. Now there is a clear alignment between positive brand recall and sales. The more likely the target audience thinks of a brand, the higher the chance they'll make a purchase. If a brand maintains its presence or salience in the consumer's minds over time, that audience will likely make repeat purchases. Repeated successfully over extended periods and there's a significant likelihood that the brand will increase its market share over time. Since all roads lead to sales, marketing campaigns and brand building should always aim to develop recall over time. Strong brand recall also gives you a competitive edge over your competitors in the marketplace. If the consumer has familiarity and comfort with the name of your brand or your brand logo, and that's the first brand that they think of when given the prompt, then that constitutes a competitive edge over your competitors. Let's use Google search results as an example. There's a reason why there's a whole SEO industry helping companies to obtain that coveted number one spot on the Google search results. If the first thing that comes to mind in our heads does the trick, fixes the problem, then we'll often stick with that result. On such premises, brand loyalty gets built and over time, brand adoption and brand advocacy as well. So it goes without saying then that gaining the number one spot in the consumer's recall results will reap the rewards for a business. The next advantage to strong recall is word of mouth marketing. 
It logically follows that if a brand has high recall levels, there's a high chance that people will spread their thoughts on the brand in conversations with other people as they go about their daily lives. Think about this in your own lives as well. If you end up in a conversation with a friend about a given category, then the brands that you're able to recall quickly may come up within those conversations. For example, if you have a conversation about wireless headphones and you easily recall Dre Beats, well, then Dre Beats has a high likelihood of coming up within that conversation. Likewise, within the cosmetics category, if you're able to recall the Mac makeup brand really easily, then there's a high chance that that will come up within your conversation. And this feeds into the idea that the higher the level of brand recall, the more chance of that brand being associated with conversations and passed on through word of mouth marketing. So how do you go about measuring brand recall? Well, few brands have reached that iconic status of Apple or Amazon, but we all know that marketing is about tracking metrics. So what do brand strategists measure in order to get a feel for their levels of brand recall? Well, there's a simple formula to use. Brand recall percentage equals survey respondents who correctly identified or recalled your brand divided by the total number of respondents multiplied by 100. In other words, what percentage of people recognized your brand when prompted with your category? Now, it's really important here to compare apples with apples and not apples with oranges. There's no point in going out into the market and asking the broad market whether or not they recognize your small sportswear boutique brand compared to Nike. So it's important that you ask the right questions and you make sure that you're positioning your brand within its niche category. So what is aided recall versus unaided recall? It is worth noting a slight difference between the two when it comes to brand recall. As the name suggests, aided recall gives the respondent slightly more help with a stimulating cue. And this is still valuable market research because it assesses the efficacy of previous marketing campaigns. For example, you could share images of a tagline from a previous ad campaign to test whether these ads landed in the consumer's mind and whether, whether or not they're able to recall that particular campaign. Unaided recall is where a consumer names the brand without any sensory cues whatsoever. For example, if a market researcher asks, name a supermarket chain and the respondent answers Aldi. This is unaided brand recall since there were no brand specific indicators or assets to suggest the brand Aldi, therefore it was unaided. So let's dive into some strategies brands can utilize to boost brand awareness that can eventually lead to brand recall. Number one, know your audience. It's a common mistake to try and gain traction with as wide an audience as possible. The logic is that the wider the net is cast, the more likely that something will stick and more people will recognize the brand. The reality is, however, by trying to attract a wide audience, there is a risk of spreading too thin. There's a better chance of success when brands know their narrow target segment and hone in on their messaging to attract those specific people. So you must know your audience. To put it another way, it's better to achieve brand recall amongst a small niche group of people most likely to buy your product than it is across a broad market of people who are less likely to buy your product. Number two, track performance. Now all marketing should be goal-based and you should have the metrics in place to be able to measure progress over time. So take the time to benchmark and set those foundations. And a few easy metrics to follow here would be the likes of your website visitors, your social media followers, your likes, your shares, your comments, etc. Now, if all of these are on the up, it's an indication that your brand awareness is increasing and also that your brand recall levels are increasing as well. So make sure that you set some intervals to interview the market and, and try to monitor the progress over time with the percentage levels of your recall rates within your given market. Number three, lead with your difference. Now, if you follow my stuff, you know how much I talk about positioning strategy, differentiation, and how that is brand strategy 101. Without that difference, your audience has nothing to remember your brand for. What is the reason that you're giving your audience to choose your brand 
over your competitors because that is the reason that you should be leading with and that is what they should remember. If it is a compelling reason that you're giving them, then chances are they will more easily remember your brand. And if they're able to easily remember your brand, then they're going to be able to recall your brand a lot easier. So make sure that you're leading with your difference and that difference is compelling. Number four, use content marketing. Now, obviously, with the solution that you provide, you're fixing some kind of problem for your audience. And with it, that problem come other problems as well. If you have a content marketing strategy and you're creating content to help them overcome their small challenges, then chances are they will see you as an authority in your space. They will come back to you time and again for the answers that you provide through your content. And that is a great way to make your brand sticky in the mind of your audience so that they remember your brand first and foremost, and then they're more easily able to recall your brand, whether it's to answer a question through the content that you provide or whether it's to come to you for the solution that you're selling. Number five, embrace partnerships. Now, partnerships allow you to piggyback off an existing audience. Now, to do this well, you need to partner with brands that aren't direct competitors, but offer a product or a service that complements your offering to a similar audience. For example, a clothing company may partner with a shoe company to work on a collaboration. Another example of this would be Nespresso partnering with Breville to create coffee capsule machines. Alternatively, partnerships need not exclusively be with corporate brands. So influencer marketing and personal brands are on the rise today, allowing brands to tap in to an influencer's existing audience and allows that influencer to advocate for different brands and earn referral fees for doing that as well. The right partnerships can undoubtedly provide a boost to the brand recognition and boost the brand recall rates as well. Number six, embrace digital marketing. Now consumers have never been as accessible to brands as they are today. And with the advent of digital marketing and the digital transformation, brand managers have a range of tools with which to boost brand recall. Invest in a social media strategy to reach your audience. Invest in an SEO strategy to get your content in front of your audience. Or invest in paid ads to get your brand in front of that target audience. All of these strategies allow you to boost your awareness, to boost your recognition, and to boost your recall. So make sure you look into where your audience are congregating and get in front of them through digital marketing. Number seven, develop memorable brand assets. Now, Brand assets are absolutely key to getting your brand to stick in the mind of your audience, whether that's a well-designed logo, a catchy tagline, a memorable jingle. These are all assets that you can plant as a seed in the mind of your audience so that they're able to remember your brand and then to recall it later on. Now, the key to utilizing brand assets towards brand recall is to use them consistently throughout your entire brand experience at every single touch point. Now look, I'll be the first to say that achieving brand recall is no easy feat. You have to achieve brand awareness first, brand recognition second, before you can even start to think about brand recall. Not every single brand has high levels of recall and they are reserved for the likes of Nike, McDonald's, Apple, and these brands only really receive the high levels of recall after years and years and years of consistently using their brand assets. So when it comes to your brand, start at the basics. Think about the assets that you have built for your brand to be memorable in the first place and use them consistently at every single touch point. Over time, your levels of memorability will increase, your awareness will increase, your recognition will increase, and ultimately your recall and your chances in the buying decision will increase. Now, if you want to dive deeper into brand strategy, then this video here will help you out. But before you click it, if you want to become a master of brand, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to get new videos just like this. Until next time, brand like a master, and I'll see you in the next video.